So we're still in the context of the Jewish Feast of Tabernacles. And in a nutshell, the Jewish Feast of Tabernacles is a celebration of God's providential care. That's what it is in a nutshell. Celebrating the fact that God is always looking out after the people. We get to the, the climax, the final part. And I say it's the climax because the passage ends with the leaders wanted to pick up stones and throw them at Jesus. They want to stone him to death. You know, um, This is where we're at. And really the, the exchange, the altercations between Jesus and these leaders actually get much worse, if that's even possible. We'll see that in the next couple days. Okay. But Jesus says, whoever keeps my word will never see death. And like in other instances in John's gospel, the people who are hearing it are taking Jesus at surface level. You know, the one time there was Jesus and Nicodemus, where Jesus says, you have to be born again. And Nicodemus is like, well, how can a grown person be placed back into his mother's womb? He, he took Jesus at face value. Okay, Jesus is talking about something deeper here. Um, trying to think, of, I know I had another instance uh, in it, um, but I can't recall what it is. But there, there's other examples where, again, Jesus talks on face value, and they take him at face value, but he wants us to go deeper. Never see death. So Jesus isn't talking about just a bodily death. In fact, a bodily death because of what we're going to celebrate next week. The fact that our Lord rose from the dead, the body death turns into a transition from this life into the life of the I am, the life of a God who identifies himself with the present ver a verb of the form to be, meaning he's always present, he's always living, he's always active. That's who Jesus identifies himself with, the same name that God gave to Moses in the wilderness. That's why the people want to want to stone him. He's identifying himself with God, God in the flesh right here. And that very present life of God that's always present, that has no beginning, has ne doesn't have an end, never grows old, is the life in which he wishes to exit us into. I use that word very carefully, exodus. You know, remember the, the exodus in the Old Testament from slavery to freedom. You know, this is the slavery of sin and death that has a, such a grasp over ourselves, a grasp over our lives. It's what we fear about and, and mourn about the, the most. From this life into a, a life where it's God and life in its fullness and a God who is full of love. That's the transition. That's where Jesus wants to take us. That's where he's heading to. You know, he's going to head that way by suffering the one thing that, that worries us the most, death. He's going to suffer that. He's going to enter into that. So then he can also defeat it, but then also have us share in the fruits of that. This is what this is all about. The one problem we cannot fix, death, our Lord moves it into not a permanent end of things, but a beginning into a new life to come. The leaders can't see that, not because of some sort of knowledge that they don't have, but because of the pride and because of the world that they created for themselves. They're so just enamored by this world, by all the power and prestige that they have, they don't want to let that go. Because then turn to that life of God, you have, to be, you have to be a son to the Father. You know, meaning that like, there's, there's someone out there actually greater than them. Someone out there greater than us that we give our whole obedience and allegiance and our love to. Which means that in a way we, we lose our power. We become powerless in terms of earthly standards. Because there's another standard out there. There's another greater being out there uh, who is providing for us and taking care of us, and who is fixing this ultimate problem of death, fixing it by showing his great love, fixing it by experiencing a, a gruesome death so that we can have life to the fullness. So in faith, we believe that. We believe it. 
We believe it not only because of the words of Christ, but because of the testimony and witnesses of the saints who follow after them. Let us let go of the power and anything else that gets us to hold on to this life as we know it and to know that there is also God's divine life to come. May God bless you.